What's going on, Cancer? I salute the divinity in you, and welcome to the Chariot and Friends. Justin here, and you feeling powerful? Because the moon is. <laughs> She's home, <laughs> just all in her glory. And this is going to be, you feeling intuitive, Cancer? This is a great time to just tune into yourself when the moon is in Cancer. Just, I find if you have a great view of the moon to, during this period of time, bask in that, that lunar energy, because <laughs> who doesn't love a good and this is especially great for those of you if you do have your sun sign in cancer when the moon is conjunct your sun it could be a very revitalizing energy a time for just really oh i love it. we're gonna get into that more in a moment but if you're new to this channel again welcome my name is justin and know that when you're coming across this video you're in sync with the moon and she loves that and this is also a place where if you have cancer in your placement sun moon rising wherever this one's for you and I do tarot cards, friends. Base of our ruler here, the good old moon. And I'll talk about what sign she's in, what phase she's in, when she's going boy. Of course, there's all them lunar shenanigans. And just so y'all aware, this is a general reading, not a one-to-one. -one. So take what fits into your story. Leave the rest with me, and everything will be. Yeah, that's. <laughs> that's after I switch things up impromptu. Now. <laughs> Let's see if we can bring this back. Let's jump into it. Because, yes, and you know what? This is a cancer. First off, happy moon day. <laughs> so, right, right. The moon is extra strong right now. And I'm going to shuffle your cards while, while we're getting into this thing. I'm so excited. The moon is associated with Mondays. And this is a great day for... Ew, okay, we're trusting the intuition here. Thanks, but you got a lot here for your general energy. We're going to work through all that. But this is a great time for tuning into the subconscious mind, to tune, tune into your... Oh, yeah, to tune into your feelings, to get into... This is high priestess energy that we're in right now. And yeah, you got a lot that we're going to be working out through here. You got like five cards. I like the how we've been doing this, but... Moon day can also be a great day for you. Yeah, just checking in with your rhythm. Moon, the moon is very cyclical in how she works. And so tuning into your rhythm, your sir, you know, an herb that if, and again, we'll check with your, if you have, if you're working with a doctor or anything, check with this, but maybe an herb to even consider working with if you want to get your circadian rhythm back into flow is working with ashwagandha. That's a really great herb for that. That's one that I work with very regularly in like my, my daytime blend teas when I first wake up. And... You know, the moon can be, I feel like moon days can be a really great time too for just kind of tuning, like kind of cleaning up around the home space. That could be another thing that the moon can deal with. But pay attention too, as far as like, especially any sort of like reactive things that come with the moon here. Because she, where she is feeling a lot of strong feelings. Yeah, well, we'll get into that more in a minute. But I also, before we get into this, I want to talk about some solar shenanigans. Because on the, on the, this is going to be the day day after when the moon enters into Cancer, the sun is going to be entering into Scorpio. And for those of you who have their sun in Scorpio, happy solar return! And if you want to, look at all the balloons, and if you want to know what's coming up for you for the year, down in the description box, you can book a solar return reading with me. But the sun is going to enter into Scorpio at about 3.15 p.m., and that's going to be Pacific time. And with the, you talk about some deep intuitive insights, we're, we're going to be, especially with the moon here, we're going to be under a lot of intuitive energies over these next couple of days. And every time the moon is in a water sign, because we'll have right now, it'll be the sun, the moon, Mercury, Mars and Saturn are all in water signs right now. And so with all of this, and maybe that's why all this is, oh, look at that, five five cards, five planets, I'm with it. So yeah, pay attention because Scorpio is one, they're the fixed water sign, they're feminine in nature, just like Cancer. So pay attention to what you receive during this time, but also the energies of those around you and the things that you're taking in. This is a great time to get introspective, but try not to get stuck in that subjectivity. If you feel that you've been swished around in the oceans do some things to help ground you something to help get you outside of yourself if you find yourself too too much going on or feeling too many things get outside 
get by some water and if that's not available to you maybe even listening to some things like listening to some running water because i feel like an ocean is very it's a little stagnant for me <laughs> i like the i like the sound of like and this is just for me personally i like listening to when the water's like flowing that always feels to be seems to be really nice maybe you're just like taking a shower or something if you're feeling a lot of if you're feeling a lot of hot emotions maybe a little bit cooler if you're feeling Cold emotions, I'm a little hotter. <laughs> Tune into your body. You're very attuned to this time. And just to get comfortable with, or get more familiar with that space. But that's what I got with the solar shenanigans. Let's get into the lunar shenanigans. Because the day before, on the 21st of October, the moon is going to be entering into Cancer at about 3.50 p.m. And, and again, that's Pacific time. And she's in a waning gibbous phase. And the waning gibbous is a great time for imparting, for sharing information, for for imp or even for like conveying awareness and things along those lines. So that would be something I think just working with the phase in itself. If you've been finding yourself maybe in a lot of maybe because Mercury's been in Scorpio, Mars has been in Cancer for a while, Saturn's been chilling in Pisces for a minute. So if you've been having some maybe tougher things that are coming up, maybe sharing some of these things and maybe when you know in a space where you feel safe and with someone who can understand and help you bring that objectivity to help you get get grounded and whatever and maybe even help you work through what is going on through going on during this time you know i feel like that's what saturn and pisces has been really teaching us during during his during his time in here learning how to move through emotions in a in a healthy way in a constructive way but I find with the moon being in Cancer, now this is where the moon is at her strongest. The moon is domicile in Cancer, which just means she's at home here. She has all the resources that she needs to in order to do what she does need to. She don't need anybody else. <laughs> but I, when you're thinking about the nature of Cancer, Cancer's modality is cardinal, so they are the they're one of the initiators of the zodiac. And so there is this active energy that happens with cancer. I feel like cancer can get a very big, maybe it's because of the element and the gender that they get this more passive nature, but cancer is one of action. And their, their element is water, which can deal with the emotions, but also with the intuition, the psychic space. There's an attunement to spirit, to source that they're able to tap into and they get that. Uh, they're the initiators of feelings where the feelings first happen. So that's where you get cancers known for their really strong intuitive. They can, they can sense, they can move through through energies and through a room very, very crafty when, when, when cancer is going. You say, oh, oh that's doing a lot. That's just like, oh, okay, I'm sensing this here. And they know how to, because I find when cancer is in tune with their cycles, they're able to help others to, to get in flow with themselves as well. Cancer benefits really from pain working with the moon, of course, which is their ruler. And then you have their gender, which is feminine in nature. So there is a receptivity, but that just means I feel like they, they're able to... You're able to receive, especially these these feelings, when you understand what you're feeling and what you're receiving, what's yours and what isn't, you can move through the space more effectively and be more proactive as opposed to reactive. That's where cancer gets like that that nurturer type of type of moniker because they do I feel we you know the sign does sun moon rise or wherever you have cancer does give you that ability to sense things and be more attuned to those those flows and things like that when you're working on that so that's just something to pay attention to when we're thinking about with with the moon and cancer but this again is a great time for if you have been feeling a bit disconnected from yourself to do some some practices to sort through those waters if they, things have been feeling choppy from above dive deep below and do some meditation maybe maybe even go do some swimming possibly or maybe drinking some tea, some sort of activity with water, I think can be very beneficial for cancer. So those are just some things to think about. And if you're wanting to get more familiar with the, maybe your cancer placements or maybe your Scorpio placements, whatever that's looking like. Maybe I, I've been talking with actually some people, I, I ran into a chart where I was talking with someone who's 
Pisces, Sun, Cancer, Moon. They have Pisces and Mercury, Venus, and the Sun. And they have a lot of water in their chart. So maybe you're working with a lot of water, just a lot of energy in general. If you want to know how to work with that more effectively, get a better idea of what you what tools you have, or if, you, you're, if you've got a Cancer Moon and you're coming up on your lunar return, all that information is down in the description box below the services that I provide. So definitely check that out if that's something that resonates with you. Trust that intuition. But... I think that's all I got for you. So let me go ahead and switch over here. And look, right, look at all these cards. <laughs> and now, before I get into this thing, I want to maybe something to help kind of ground this too. Maybe work with some sound, sound he healing here. But I'm going to ring this bell and. Oh, and know that these readings that I do, they're not gender-specific readings, so apply these energies to people as they make sense for your situation. But I'm going to ring this bell to bring in some good vibes, hopefully calm down the energies if you've been feeling a lot of emotions, and let's get into this thing. Let's get into this thing. Okay. All right. So you have for your general energies, <laughs> this all this energy of the day. So first off, you have the Moth Spirit card here. I'm just going to break this. We'll go through this one at a time here. So the Moth Spirit is a card of surrender now. And I feel that's very appropriate with this water energy. Water is one that I feel it's learning to go with the flow, especially like I was saying, if things have been feeling a bit tumultuous as of late, and maybe you've been feeling a lot of things, understanding how to work when the, with those, because sometimes I feel that maybe in when, when there are more unsavory or oh, let's not even call them that, when there are tougher emotions that come up, we can want to either skip over them all together or just try to force something and then we get, the things just get out of hand. And I feel sometimes with water, you need to just kind of be, find yourself a safe space because let's, let's get into the wasp spirit or this next card here, there's the wasp spirit and it says sometimes life stings and maybe there's something that was going on here. Maybe Mars is maybe with where he's transiting in your in your house or maybe where, wherever house he's transiting or maybe he's hitting up different aspecting different planets maybe you have a, a lot of cardinal placements that are aren't really agreeable with this but even if not there are moments where life can seem like it it, it stings and sometimes we have to surrender to that energy and allow like, okay, what are these emotions trying to teach me at this time? How do I not get overwhelmed by these emotions that are coming up? Because the next card here, the bat spirit, this is a card of a rebirth is assured. And once we get through the sting and we apply some ointment, some salve, we allow that stuff to heal, you know, maybe change the dressings, metaphorically speaking, allow this stuff to, or maybe even physically, you know, like, huh, I'm even getting a message where there are times where I, I've, not, I've not personally <laughs> broken anything, but maybe you're going through, oh, but I've been, I've been where the body's needed to heal, whether it be from a sickness or whatever may have happened. And it's like, how do you keep that energy of knowing that you're going to get on the other side of this when maybe the emotions feel so intense in in the moment and allow those intuitive downloads to to not let the maybe the pain of something override the what you what you innately know here the, I'm getting a picture because this is the fifth card I'm getting associations with the hierophant which is the Taurus energy where the moon's exalted in but it feels like how do you keep that connection even when yeah the when life is stinking here and how do you hear 
because bats have these really this kind of like supersonic hearing and it's like and they're able to intuit in the on that well yeah i guess in a sense intuit but they're able to see through the night through this echo mm, you know what bats do <laughs> If you don't look at what bats do, <laughs> but with, with their with their abilities, and let's move to the koi spirit because this is enough of that. But this the koi spirit is a card of there's always enough, and I feel like there's this energy here of of knowing that because sometimes I think when we get into that sting with the wasp spirit that maybe you feel like you'll never get out of this thing that maybe you just feel this way how forever you know indefinitely but know that there where this challenge may be coming on there's enough good there's always enough good fortune that's going to come there's going to be an upswing like I said the moon is a cyclical plan I mean I don't know how the plan is moving a cycle but the moon moves the fastest and we want to understand our reactions and our behaviors and our moods and how things change as life as life throws us these maybe these curveballs every now and again. But I do I do find because unless I speak as someone who has their son conjunct the South Node in the in the twelfth house in Cancer, and so where. I've not been necessarily surrounded by my life hasn't been just totally but just mis unfortunate but if 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 it's not been dealing with my own it's been dealing with others and I've found that you always get to the other side of it it always happens and then you get stronger and then we get to the last card here which is the peacock spear which is let it shine and I I feel that huh well, I, I was getting like a heart chakra energy, <laughs> even though this is kind of shining out of its throat here. But I feel like maybe for some, there's this ability or there's or there's this need maybe to speak about maybe some of these things. Maybe you don't want people to see you in a weakened space when these emotions come up. And maybe there's this always enough, this, this koi fish spirit is letting you know that there is always enough compassion, that there's always enough empathy, that maybe you didn't receive that before. And maybe there's a need to uh, learning to trust that again, to allow yourself to use. Now let's talk about the throat chakra. This is this throat chakra here with the peacock, allowing these maybe harsher things to come up. You don't necessarily got to like dump your purse out on the table, but allowing some sense of vulnerability so that some healing can happen and, and let it let it shine be strong look like at this peacock wearing its crown showing his fit this tail feathers it's not ashamed <laughs> it's beautiful what's happening emotions can be something very beautiful very nurturing when we form this relationship with them and i like that let's get some let's get some terror on this okay okay we're gonna do a little bit differently i'm gonna clarify okay let's get some some stuff with this moth spirit here Okay. Thank you, Spirit. Oh, and I like that. So the... Oh, <laughs> look at that. So the Moth Spirit is clarified by the Six of Swords, the Hanged Man, which is this water energy, and then the Lust card, which is the, which is the Strength, known as the Strength card, but it's Leo energy. Now, the, the, the Hanged Man has the, the Glyph for Water, the for the water element here and I, that's interesting too because in the six of swords there's usually someone that's traveling on a boat through water and i feel like this is you going on this going huh speaking of surrender absolutely the hanged man can be about surrender a need for letting go right now for allowing, you're going through these cosmic waters and they're needing, there's this level of strength that's needing to happen right now. A need to this this woman here, she's, she's holding the reins of this beast that's happening. That could be this emotions. And the emotions here, this this beast has several faces that are that are on them. There's a there's a face of an angel, an adulteress, a poet, a writer. A oh goodness, let me let me I'm, 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 I about had them all. Let me let me 
Let me look at that. Okay, so it's an angel, a saint, a poet, an adulteress, a warrior, a satyr, and a lion serpent. And so you can, I feel like this is not necessarily, it's it's getting the reins on the emotions, but it's not controlling them. It's a learning to work with them. And the Six of Swords is, I'm getting like a rite of passage type of energy. This The hanged man is going through the journey of water. It starts with the chariot cancer energy that, that's initiating this, this. This feeling has come up. And then we get to the death card, Scorpio energy, where there's this, this, huh, I love that this came up. And we're, we're, and we're processing all these emotions. We're holding these ones that we seem to get stuck in and we're transmuting them when we get into the moon card, which is Pisces, and gaining this new wisdom and growing from these things. But it's this it's a process that is going to require this energy and this wherewithal that you do have to do this thing. And it may feel, I've just got a picture of a moth flying to a flame, and it might feel like that in the moment but you're going to get to the other side of this thing let's get to the lost spirit this sometimes life stings but first we have to surrender and i think that there's this understanding here but you're not again we're not staying in the emotion that's something to keep in mind too like it's thank you spirit Oh, look at that. So the, the, the wasp spirit is clarified by the five of wands here. And this has strife on this card. This is, this is what is this, Merc no, Saturn and Leo. And I, I, I'm getting with this that there are times where things feel frustrating with, with life, when life does seem to sting us. And it feels like maybe that there's an attack that things don't seem fair, whatever that may come up for you when we're in this, you know, when you get in, if you get in that rut or something, something along those lines. We all have things that come up. I actually am going through a transit right now. It's a brief one, but I had noticed where Mercury is being in Scorpio squaring my natal Mercury right now. And I noticed something that was coming up for me, some frustrations that were happening, but I was very aware of it. But it was nice to see it in the chart too. It's just like, oh, right. Because, and it's happening between fixed signs. And I was noticing a thing of where I was having troubles letting go, or I was working on letting go of something and putting in that, that conscious effort. But it is something that the five of wands can be this need to, to brainstorm to yeah, I'm again I'm getting at this need because in the I'm picturing the Rider White how there are these figures that are all working with these wands that are like in a sense of training and it's not gonna always be perfect I'm getting with this with this five of wands energy and it's gonna be something that requires this sense of discipline because if we let those things if we just respond to just every emotion that happens and don't take the time to understand why they're coming up and channel them effectively then thing then we take our sting and start stinging others and then it's just like spreading this stuff around here and actually it's in hold on it's starting to get a little dark here so i'm like ooh, <laughs> let me let me bring me bring some light onto this thing but that's what i'm getting getting with this with this wasp spirit here now let's go and get to the bat the bat spirit which is a card the card of a, a rebirth is assured thank you spirit oh look at that more heat <laughs> and so you got the nine of wands here and with the nine of wands, I feel that there's this, again, this energetic responsibility that's needing to happen right now because thing, you, things are going to, they're going to get better. Things are going to improve, but here there's strength at the bottom of this card. <laughs> Look at that, double, almost like double strength here. But there's even this there's this this preparation that's needing to happen a need to get things to get the energies in order is what i'm feeling look i like this this card here how it's like the moon is opposing the sun and i feel that it's 
these emotions, these things that may come up for you, they're, they're always trying to teach you something. They're always for this betterment, this advancement in, in life, you know? And sometimes I feel like things, if things are coming up, it's like a moment to get us to slow down is another message that I'm getting. A need to, let's say maybe you, maybe there was a, you know, hope this is not what's going on, but maybe there was something where we injured ourselves or something that may be a need to like, okay, we need to sit down, just sit down for a minute. There's someone I'm thinking about right now, they actually, without getting too graphic there something happened with their nail they had the, it, was, it was a lot <laughs> but it's there may have been a need to just like it's like what was i moving too fast like even kind of reflecting like that okay why did this happen i remember doing something oh goodness okay here's a here's an example i was talking with someone about a, a certain the topic is 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 it's it's eluding me at the moment but i was talking a bit mindlessly of like just being not very aware of my surroundings and i was i, I said it was almost almost poetic what I was talking about. I was like, and just like all over the place or something like that. And I hit my hand against something. I cut my finger and I was just like, and that's what happens when you're not paying attention, when you get ripped up. Cause I was feeling a lot of heat and it was just like, when you get whipped up in a frenzy and then you end up hurting yourself. And so that was just like a, God, I, it wasn't even something I was necessarily, I was yeah, it stunk that it, it stunk a bit that it happened, but it it wasn't for just like no apparent reason. I know that's a very basic example, but let me get a little bit more with this this with this nine of wands here before I move to the koi spirit. Thank you, spirit. Okay, so the the. The Nine of Wands is clarified by the Seven of Moons and the Six of Wands here. Now, the Seven of Moons, oh, that's good. I've just got a, this thing of like, oh, that's interesting. It almost reminds me of the shape of the constellation of Scorpio a little bit. But I, I've got this, this energy of you can pick which how the the emotion that you can respond to and know it may seem in the moment to just because i feel what what can happen with cancer being the especially with mars being in cancer right now that because i feel like it, and this is where i think it's interesting how cancer has kind of had and i get it like where this there can be this passivity that's given to cancer but cancer can be very reactive and, and I feel even more so than what you may even expect from like a fire sign or but it's just it's coming from a different place. But it's I feel like there's this thing of like you have options on how you can respond to this and what you want to learn from this. And it gets easier. It may at first, maybe we just we were kind of we were just kind of base level. It was just kind of reactive. But as we got control, OK, I learned from this thing. OK, and I got a little bit stronger and then a new lesson came out. OK, and then I got a new lesson and it repeated itself until you became on top of of this thing. You showed strength. You showed this prudence, this. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm getting getting from that. All right, let's get to the koi fish spirit. at that there's pisces so you have so the koi fish spirit is clarified by the the moon card which is pisces the prince of cups 
and the Four of Wands here. And the Koi Spirit is there's always enough. And I'm getting this message of where you may feel like you like when you're ready to maybe give up possibly like this surrender is not giving up it's knowing that you can move through these emotions but there're going to be times where we're journeying through the dark here where we're going to come face to this gate of am i ready to pass through this thing am i ready to maybe deal with a certain type of emotion with a certain situation that may bring up something in in you possibly here but and then even with this four of wands something is needing to be completed like i was saying there's like an initiatory energy that's kind of happening here right now this maybe quote unquote what may seem like a test but it's not a test to keep you in a in the hanged man where you're stuck it's to help you to glide across these these waters with with calm and with ease and to tap into a different type of energy to really understand because we, again when you're in sync with the rhythm of the emotions you intuit more effectively emotions just be don't they there's there's more order to them they don't seem so wild is what i'm getting with like the prince of cups here but if we keep silent and keep these things brewing with within it can become this this it can become combustible. Let me get a little bit more with the moon card. Thanks, Spirit. Huh, Sun and Scorpio. So the six of moons, the, the six of moons. Yeah, or the, yeah the, the moon is clarified by the six of moons here. And one, I'm getting this energy of, of, like I was saying earlier, I feel like there's enough, there's always enough, I feel like, maybe even ways of dealing with these emotions possibly. But I feel like in order to maybe get the tools that you need, like it's like I'm getting this, maybe you need to share what's going on. You have to go into the details. It could just be like, may, you know, maybe telling a friend or maybe telling a coworker, telling a partner or family member, just something like, you know, what do you do when you're feeling a lot? You know, what, what does that look like for you? And then they can kind of draw on their passing. These are some things that I've used to do or that I would try in order to, to move through these kind of dark nights of the soul. How do you carry that light through these, through this experience here? Because the, the Prince of Cups... It's almost like the Prince of Cups, like sometimes I feel can have this certain idea that he needs to just go about things. Like he gets this thought of maybe, maybe you were told that you can't feel emotions or maybe you were, maybe there was a situation where it didn't work out as well as you thought. And that's like, that's again, apply it to your situation. But I, this Prince of Cups can sometimes keep things bottled up, and it's raining in this in this card. And I feel like there, that could be like the, the the tears that no one sees possibly, or the things that are wanting to come out, and create a space for that. And create a safe space for your for yourself to deal with those things, to help process those things, and know that you don't have to do this alone. To that, there are others that, if you're not sure how to create the space that others can create that space for you. Let's get to the last card here, this peacock spirit. Let's let it shine. Right. 
Oh, look at this, look at all these majors. So you have the adjustment card here, which is the justice card, Libra energy. And then you have the lovers card, which is Gemini energy. And the justice card is about equilibrium. You know, in this deck, there's this balance that always happens. Like I was saying, you're not always gonna be in this place of, you know, where things just feel like they suck. Things are going to, can move to, things always balance out, but I'm getting this energy of, you have to take the steps in order to make them balance out. You know, that there, it's not just going to disappear by, because if we just, if it's something where you've been running away from it and not giving it the air that it needs, then it's just going to, the cycle will repeat itself in different ways until the lesson has been understood or where the, where the block is has been understood here. And the lovers in this deck is like the alchemical marriage. And I feel like there's this, this union that's happening, this choice that you're making in order to get more. Because I tell you, when you really are in tune with what you're feeling, then you can you sense things in others and you're able to speak in a way and understand in a way where maybe people have been putting things on you possibly. And that may be what comes up for you for after this while. There's a just, this justice card I'm getting, this energy, if you feel like you've been wronged in some sort of way, know that that always comes back. But I don't think that it's necessarily wishing that it comes back. What we want to wish for others, I think sometimes, especially when we feel like anger and things towards someone, ultimately you want them to change. You don't want them to keep spreading that energy around. And I feel like what you can do when you notice that things come up is send that person love and light. And you don't have to do, you don't have to... You, and move and keep it moving you know especially with that six of cups if something has already transpired you have a choice with the lovers do we want to keep entertaining that same scenario or do we want to move from this and want them to move from this too so that yeah so that that doesn't keep going on you know <laughs> i got this song <laughs> that just kind of popped in my head it's by, it's by, it's by Marsha Ambrose. It's called, I hope she cheats on you with a basketball player. And it's just like, no, because what's going to happen is that we, and not to say that we necessarily attract cheaters, but when we're wishing things on people, again, the adjustment card, you reap what you sow. And this cause and effect energy. And just with this air that's coming through here, with Libra and Gemini, let's be mindful with that. Right, let's get a little advice from the moon. Thank you, Spirit. All right, last little bit here, right? <laughs> Love that. So you have the Queen of Disc and the Ten of Disc here. And let's switch back over. <sighs> That's interesting. Yeah, I feel the queen of this, she feels like she's looking, like things feel a bit barren right now. Like that she's just like, it's just like, what do I do with all this? And I feel that with the 10 of disc here, you'll figure that out. It's something that the fact that you asked that question, one, I feel there's something here that's surrendered now it's just like, okay, this is the feeling right now. And it's, it's like, but it's going to get, it is going to improve. And I feel that's something very important to learn to work through with Scorpio season. Because I do feel that it's where, on Scor where Scorpio as, as an energy has been, I feel like people have put a lot on, and I don't, I'm speaking very generally here, but I think that the, 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 the generic thing is to just bring all this darkness on Scorpio. And I don't think that that's fair. You know, I think that it's... 
I think this season is to see what has been put upon you and then taking that energy and changing that. Like, you know what? Your darkness, your all of that, that's yours. What I'm feeling is this sense of love. I'm feeling this sense of abundance. I feel that where I may not know what to do with these things, I'm going to figure it out because I know what I want to feel. I know where I want to go. And so that's something where you may need to work with it. Even though they're the fixed water sign, in those, in those intense energies, you get intense downloads. And you get the tools that you need to in order to move through that. But maybe with this 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 queen of disc here maybe it's not something that she's been get like been given as far as like look at what am i going to do with this maybe she was like you know what i have all of this and i need to clear this field out we need to just we need to surrender there may be just a flood just came through and now we're needing to allow the water to sit and okay Let's get a new game plan because the sun's going to shine. Things are going to shine again. Let yourself shine again. You know, that's something that is something that's resonating with you. And in that, you know, you can find this this new sense of wealth again. You can do where it's not you're just not just working with just a bunch of emotions anymore. You can just you, you can utilize them more constructively. So. So I got for cancer. That was that was very fascinating. <laughs> what a reading. But if you like that, if anything resonated with you, give it a thumbs up. And share this if you know someone who would benefit from this. And subscribe that you hang man. <laughs> Hit that bell button you light and want. You know, get, get notified when I release videos each day. Or yeah. And then last little bit. If you wanted to know what's going on outside of the lunar shenanigans, come on over to my other channel, Alchemist State. I do weekly videos talking about the planets and the sun doing their shenanigans. And I also do do videos talking about different planets in different signs and different houses. I actually just got done doing one with Saturn. Saturn's been a popular theme here these last couple of roles. So on that housekeeping, oh, and I just how I pick them. They're, I totally have these 12-sided dice and just roll them at random. And all that housekeeping, or is it not so random as far as like what spirit wants to pick? Down in the description box below, but let me get you surprise cards here <laughs> so I can get you out of here. I love that. So you have the vulnerability card here, which is a card of what are you feeling? And that's the question to ask in during while the sun's in Scorpio. What are you feeling? What's coming up for you right now? Is it yours? And how are you going to work through it? What are going to be the ways that you figure this thing out? Because you will. You absolutely will. But I think that that's the question to start with. You know, this this person here seems like they're 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 feeling a lot. There's a lot of tension in their face. It seems like I even feel like there's even something here that may want to, like I was saying with that Prince of Cups, wanting to let something out. Maybe need a maybe need a good cry to help move that through. And sometimes after that, you can feel this, there could be a sense of rawness as vulnerability, but then it's like, okay, I got all that water out. What can, how do I ace a cups? How do I fill this back up with something nourishing? You know? Huh, there's even got some raindrops on here too. So maybe even listening to the rain falling. That might even be something that can kind of help kind of move through some things. And I'm being drawn to this bird that's flying here. It's like we're moving, we're, move, we're flying past this. 
Or maybe even, that's okay. I'm even getting more so like, again, like kind of viewing outside of yourself a little bit, getting a bird's eye view of what is going on internally here, kind of mapping that out, maybe doing some journaling possibly, or maybe even recording yourself kind of talking through whatever it is that you're working through. And maybe just seeing how, yeah, seeing how, what, what comes up for you during that, but that's all I got for you. So until next time, keep raising that consciousness, keep eyes on the moon, and I will catch you on the next one, Mercury Day.